If you're going to start working on your home heating, it makes sense to start before the heating season starts. So don't be like me and start early. Ooh, it's cold. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. Winter is coming again at least at this side of hemisphere a year ago i've connected my 30 year old thermostat using a five dollar device to nodred and made it smart which means you could use a widget like this something that resembles nest uh, to control the heating from wherever you are i could set the temperature from outside the house i could set some uh, policies and routines and it worked with amazon echo now Google Home connectivity wasn't available back in then in the same form as I wanted it to be, so I couldn't query the temperature or I couldn't get uh, complicated commands through, so I simply didn't add it. Now with the Gbridge, I have this possible, so I figure out I'm going to show you how to add Google Home devices and Google Assistant devices to the mix. Now, before we're going to jump into the showcase, be advised, I'm going to be calling my assistant. So if you have your assistant devices nearby, just mute them. The showcase itself is going to be slightly boring because all you're going to do is just uh, question the device and see the updates on my thermostat, which is connected in here. Now, this synchronized between uh, Alexa devices and Google Home devices. So changes can be done on one device and then you can read the status or change the settings of the thermostat from the other device, including the web interface. So let's start with simple Alexa, turn heating on. Now, changes are implemented in a five second interval. So you might see a delay up to five seconds between this is synchronized. Hey Google, what's the heating temperature? Heating is set to 21 with a current temperature of 17. As you can see, Google was able to read the status from this uh, change and uh, respond correctly. Now, to change the settings, there is another different command actually that you have to use, which is, hey Google, set heating to off. Okay, turning off the heating. And again, after a couple of seconds, you should see the updates on the screen uh, that are actually showcasing this. So as you can see, the, the phone right now showing that the heating is set to away. Now, obviously, this is not the only way to interact with uh, this. You can actually pass the temperature. Hey, Google, set heating to 22 degrees. This also works with the Google Home widget. So if you use Google Home, you will be able to actually use this widget and receive the commands. So let's uh, jump back to my widget and in a couple of seconds, it's gonna refresh. So apart from these controls, I've introduced a couple of other things, which was a temperature chart, which also showed the hysteresis uh, status, which basically means how often your heating turn on and off again, which is brilliant if you want to monitor whether your updates are too fast or too slow and the heating keeps turning itself on and off at the margin temperatures. Now that shouldn't be really a problem, but I've included that anyway. We are in a 30 year old building with a 30 year old heating inst installation. And what you can see is the Honeywell uh, thermostat in here. Now, this is a manual thermostat and it's linked to a son of basic in parallel. Why in parallel? Because that allows me to have a separate controls in case something goes wrong. So if there is no Wi-Fi connectivity, I can still control my heating using the original thermostat. Now, here you will see the son of basic flashed with Tasmota, which I'm using to connect to my Node-RED server. It, has, it is connected to DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor and that submits the data to my Node-RED server for processing. Now, in here you'll find a video explaining how I got that connected. This is wired to the mains, so be careful. And how to set up the hardware. In this video, I'm only going to focus on enabling Google Home functionality on Node-RED server and showing you how to make this work. Before we start with Node-RED setup, 
we have to probably revisit my older article, which is uh, Nest Your Old Thermostat Under $5. It will explain how to wire your thermostat with Sonoff Basic and give you a link for flashing Sonoff with Tasmota because Tasmota is going to be needed to use the DHT11 sensor uh, with Sonoff Basic. So those two guys are strongly recommended. Now, previously I talked about the G-Bridge and how you can enable Google Assistant on your old red. Now, this is also explained in details in this article and it's linked in the description of this video for you. Now, first of all, you'll have to open the G-Bridge account and you'll be able to get up to four devices for free without any subscription fees. Now, you have to create a new device, which is gonna be a thermostat. Uh, you can name it. And say heating to select uh, type it's thermostat and add the traits the default traits for this is going to be on off and you also want to go and add temperature settings now once you deploy this you'll be able to see the incoming topics and outgoing topics and we're going to use the status and action topics in node red so this is my node red flow and i know this is the least interesting feature however let's and go through it and I'll explain what, what are the changes. First of all, I'm using Node-RED 1.0, which allowed me to actually use the settings. In the settings, you'll find, this is a subfall by the way, it's a new feature, you'll find environmental variables that I was able to set. And then I've got three different environmental variables. Default temperature is the temperature that your heating is going to be set to if you're going to say command like turn heating on without passing a temperature. Now, eco low and eco high, those are clamps basically responsible for displaying the leaf. So if the temperature falls outside 17 to 23 degrees in here, then the leaves is no longer displayed and you can also use these to trigger something else. Now, thanks to this, once you press on set, it will set the preferences for you. Unfortunately, this is only available in node 1.0, but I would strongly recommend you to update if you not done so. Now, moving forward, the biggest change is probably uh, changes how I pass information to my widgets. So this is the widget, the template, and I've modified mainly the last bit to be able to send a single payload instead of five. And that gives me an edge in terms of updating and maintenance. I had to redesign entire update function mode so, node so I could pass an uh, object with all the parameters in it, but it was well worth it. Now, the majority of this stays the same, so you can see this is the core and that I was using. The temperature itself has been split into humidity and temperature. I also had to work with decimal spaces because Google requires you to pass a single decimal value as well, even if that value is zero. So I've used a special script in here to actually to add that extra uh, decimal point. Those information about the humidity, about the temperature and about uh, what temperature uh, target what has been sent via third party are being passed to Google Home. Eagle Eye viewers will notice hysteresis function. That function basically sends value of 5 or 0 whether the heating is on or off. And you can see that on the chart in here, which helps you monitor if the heating oscillates near the border temperatures. So the way it, I deal with hysteresis is I take a 15 average values of the temperature and those are being updated every five minutes. So the changes aren't happening uh, very quickly. However, that allows you to kind of maintain the temperature and uh, with the fact that the radiator uh, turns on and loses the heat uh, with time, uh, it prevents from the entire system going on and off again all the time near the bordering temperatures. Another change that I had to introduce is the passing temperature set, the temperature target, to my system. So I'm using MQTT in to actually read the changes made by Google uh, Home app and update my flow variable. To my surprise, there are two different topics that you have to use depending on whether you're going to use a voice action on Google Home or widget action on Google Home. So that's why these two has been introduced in here. And it was also easier just to clone this control relay function, uh, which basically takes completely different instructions from Alexa uh, and adapted to take the exact commands that are being sent by Google Home. 
So I've cloned this and I've passed it forward. I've introduced two outputs so I could send the same commands to control my uh, son of device and turn it on and off and then pass that update to my Google server. So Google know whether the heating has been turned on and off. And those are the main changes I've applied to this. There is more work to be done. So apart from making an actual enclosure and fixing the looks of my thermostat, I'll be looking into some notifications available in Android devices. So right now, the web interface can be accessed from anywhere if you want to, as long as you can open the web browser. I'll be looking into changing this and allowing notification to be created on your Android device, which will display the temperatures and controls for your thermostat. There'll be also a designated thermostat app that you can use with Tasker to use a nice web design interface to interact with. I'm also going to introduce a Google Calendar for scheduling, but for now you can use Alexa and Google Home routines to actually start and stop your heatings at different times. Bear in mind that those will only apply if you have connectivity enabled, so if you lose your internet, your routines obviously won't work. So guys, keep warm because winter is upon us and if you're interested in this project and converting your old thermostat into something connected, uh, extended tutorial, it's available in a written form in the description of this video. Now, if you're interested in a follow-up, introducing a Tasker, Android integrations, building the box and adding a calendar support, then you best follow me on social media of your choice so you get notification. For now, guys, I'm going to, well, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'm going to see you in the next video. So, take care. Bye.